our website is nightingaleforgovernor.com, and that's N-I-G-H-T-I-N-G-A-L-E, nightingaleforgovernor.com. We need your support. We need to fight for liberty. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about your campaign. You're having uh, incredible success while working on a shoestring budget. Uh, and I want to talk about also why the mainstream media is not covering you. However, you are seeing success in that capacity. When you have a third party candidate doing so well and have such fervor and we can't even keep up, why wouldn't the news want to focus on our campaign? Who is this Shelley Nightingale? How come people are talking about her? How come on internet polls she's placing second? How come she has more hits on her website than Steve Poisner, a big money candidate? How come there's videos if you Google her name and Google the campaign, it's all over the internet. How come the news doesn't care? You would think that they would care more about the politics in, the, in an election year than covering the three big money candidates and probably have a combined total of 70, 75 millions that they've spent on their campaigns. It's bought and paid for. We the people have to stop listening to them. And by them, I mean the media that lies to us and keeps third-party candidates and really important news out of the news. Because it's not in the media. You cannot find us in the media. And you won't find us in the debates. We are uninvited to just so many events when they find out that we are not in the two main system parties. Um, we're not included. The truth is getting out there. The corporations, the unions, the big elite, they're going to help those big money candidates keep them in power. They do not want we the people to have power. The big government, they want to divide us and we have to stop letting them do that. They want people to look at each other, suspect one another, divide. They see the unity. They see the unity happening. They saw it with the Ron Paul movement. They saw it with the Tea Parties. That's why they have to go out and try to divide us because if suddenly we put everything out the door. I just said this to somebody the other day. Stop. Stop. Who cares about the social issues? Who cares about all you know, the race wars and everything else? We need to come together on one thing, and that's the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to what we were created for, individual rights, our freedom. Let's get back to that. If we can, if we can unite on, on that alone, then we will rise up, and then they will fear that. There's a reason that they don't want us to have our First and Second Amendment rights. We need to unite. Well, remember, we don't really have a two-party system. If anybody still thinks that, uh, they need to stop drinking the water. Because um, it's, what really is the difference between George Bush and Obama? other than they look different. They're both controlled by the same people. You hear frustrated voters saying, I don't see any difference. What was the difference between Gray Davis, who Californians recalled, and Arnold Schwarzenegger? The parties are merging together. They are almost one. When you have the, uh, the, the elite leading members of both parties sitting on a council on foreign relations, which is uh, supposed to be a think tank, you've got the two parties melting as one uh, behind closed doors in secrecy. How can you say we have a two-party system anymore? The two parties are working together to undermine our sovereignty, to undermine our liberty. And we need to stop it. And the only way we're going to do that is to look outside those two parties. Many people have called California just a complete mess. Uh, what are you going to do to restore the economy and restore California? This state, by the way, is the large, one of the eighth largest economies in the entire world. Yet we are facing a $25 billion deficit and climbing and over a $68 billion public debt. Where is the money? I'll tell you where it is. Again, the big government destroying our state. You have AB32, which is decimating business, and that, of course, is the Global Warming Solutions Act. You have no water in the Central Valley. They've made sure that the Delta pumps are closed so that we're killing agriculture and killing jobs. That is what their agenda is to do. I'm, my husband and I, we're small business owners. <laughs> the, the, the taxes, the regulations they have on business, 
killing us. That's why people are leaving the state. So here's the plan. First of all, we need to make sure that that legislature goes part-time so that they cannot continue to be full-time to create these new regulations that are killing us. We need to reduce the tax. In fact, I signed a no-tax pledge. Reduce the taxes so that businesses will come back. We need to create productivity. We need a state bank. I'm for ending the Fed. I do not want our state to be on any credit slave system or any federal system. I would like to see a sound money, gold-backed state bank that we could create to get us on our own feet. If we're the eighth largest economy in the world, we don't need them and they need us. Uh, and another thing that we need to do um, is besides creating jobs is making sure that they're for California legal residents only. And another thing that we need to do is we need to secure the borders and stop benefits to uh, illegal immigrants because it does. It costs our state billions and billions of dollars just on education and incarceration and health care alone. It's nearly $12 billion when you add in CalWORKs and food stamps and the, the the, the number goes much higher, probably closer to 20 billion. If we did that, 20 billion, that's basically what we're in debt in this state. That alone could help solve our problems. Also, let's take out big government. Do you realize here in the state of California that government is actually one of the top revenues in the state? People want to know the truth. Speak truth. Truth will get you further than keeping things behind closed doors. Remember Obama said he was going to be very transparent and people voted for him. They voted for him because he said the two words, hope and transparency. And people are disappointed because he's offered neither. That's what people want. Yes, maybe people might think you're crazy, but do you really care? We have a country to save. We have children to think about. We have our own sovereignty and our own freedom. Freedom! People have died for freedom. 25,000, I believe, is the number of soldiers who died in the very first revolution. You know, soldiers are dying in Iraq and Afghanistan, supposedly for our freedom. People are dying around the world for freedom. So we can't speak out and, and worry you know, what somebody might think. I, I don't care what people think. I have to be honest with you because all I care about is getting out there and being a voice for the people that, that know the truth, to speak the truth, to educate people. Whether we win or lose isn't really the point for me. It's, it's, it's freeing people, letting them know that freedom is the choice and we can't have it with big government. Why are they doing this? Why are they taking away our rights? When you take away rights, then you don't have your individual voice. You don't have your individual freedom. You take away your rights, it's be a bigger government, more control over you, more control to tell you what and when you can't. Um, you know, for instance, the Census Bureau. Since when has the Census actually had a questionnaire where they're asking us our personal information? Where do we work? Who our parents are? Who our children? Why are they asking us personal information that they've never asked? before. They want to know more about us. You know, it's that saying, you know, government should, you know, people should not fear their government. Government, you know, should fear their people. Well, that's changing. That's reversing. The only way you can do that and create a system, a two-tier system, you have the elite and you have the people. The elite and the people. And that's where we're headed. And that's why they're doing it. So what are your plans for education here in California? I believe in, in sovereignty, states' rights, by the way. I really don't want to have the federal government controlling our public schools. Why can we not have state schools? So state schools that do not have a political agenda and allow parents the choice to educate their own children, whether it's private school, a state school, or, you know, their own homeschooling. You know, when, once you're awake and you, and you see things in a different perspective, you, you just you can't go back and, and you... And it fills you with such passion that you want to go out there and you want to fight for your children and other people's children and the future of this country. Because if not, it is just going to be a third world controlled big government nation where everybody's oppressed and living in poverty. During the time of King George, we saw the church actually have the rights taken away because he forbid them from their free speech. Uh, today, we see churches uh, getting involved with the federal government. And there's a popular scripture which says, do not be yoked with unbelievers. 
Do you think that church involvement with 501c3 could lead to a similar situation that we saw back in the days of King George? Well, it's already happened. The 501c3, in fact, I, I have said it before, I don't think any church should be 501c3 affiliated. But see, the government set that up so they could have control over the church. Mm -hmm. And so churches are silenced into um, being able to speak freely. You know, uh, they're even, you know, some cases are being told that they can't speak what's in scripture. Okay, if you don't agree with me on, say, marriage issues or pro-life issues, fine. Let's talk about that another time. If we start buying into the poison of the two-party system, we the people don't have a chance. If we want to fight for freedom and state rights and individual rights, we the people must unite. That's my message. Just want to thank you for, uh, for taking time to talk to us about your campaign and some other issues. How do we vote for Shalene Nightingale? To vote for us, simply go to our website, nightingaleforgovernor.com. We have all the information right there. We're under the American Independent Ticket in this state, so go out and register AIP.